Hey there, Kitchen Mutants. It is your favorite daddy man in the kitchen. Happy Friday and welcome back to the kitchen. I'm so glad to have you with me again this week. Tonight we are making a delicious dish that is good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Unbelievably flexible and great for those pantry items that I'm sure you are so dependent upon right now. We are making a delicious chicken potato hash. It's really, really good. It's got eggs on top. Um, it's got some peppers. Uh, it's really delicious. And like I said, it's super flexible. I will go through with you um, the ingredients and how you can flex those up uh, in just a minute. But the first thing we need to do is we've got three quarter pound of chicken breast. Now, this is raw chicken breast. If you have leftover chicken from something, if you did some pan frying of some chicken, or even if you have barbecue chicken, seasoned up chicken is not a problem. It's delicious. If you happen to have a rotisserie chicken or you got some leftover chicken, peel that all off. You're going to want about a cup, maybe three quarters, maybe a, a cup and a quarter. Again, this is completely flexible. So, but I am going to take this raw chicken <clears throat> and we're going to Put it on a plastic cutting board. Again, we always make sure we're using um, plastic when we're doing the chicken. And I'm gonna flip this over very carefully, trying not to get my hands chickeny. Um, I have a piece of plastic wrap on here, and I'm gonna flip another piece of plastic wrap or the other half of this plastic wrap over on top of that chicken. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pound this out because we're gonna get this in the oven 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And we wanna go nice and flat and thin, that way it cooks um, super fast. So just get that pounded out, make sure you're keeping the... like a chicken cutlet if we were doing a um, breaded chicken breast, excuse me, but you're going to get that on there. Again, I'm trying not to get my hands chickeny, but I think it's going to be inevitable. So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil on this chicken now, just a tiny little bit, okay, salt and pepper. Rub that all over on all the sides. Okay. And now this is going to go in that 400 degree oven paper towel here for about 10 minutes. There we go. All right, let me wash my hands up here. We'll get started again. clean. Let's get through those ingredients. We're going to use one pepper, red, green, yellow, whatever you have. This um, is a medium pepper. If you don't have, we're also going to use two poblano peppers. Uh, these are a nice mild kind of uh, an easy heat. Um, it definitely has a little warmth, but not super spicy hot. Um, if you don't have these, go with a really large pepper or um, two smaller peppers. Uh, to compensate. We're also going to do um, one onion, yellow onion. You know I like the sweet Vidalia. Two potatoes. These are larger potatoes. I'm using a sweet potato. You can definitely use a regular baking potato. If you have some fingerling potatoes, that's good too. We're going to use uh, four eggs, three cloves of garlic, some thyme. Your thyme may be drying out at this point. It's not a big deal. If it's in the refrigerator and it's starting to get black, Pull it out of your refrigerator, lay it down somewhere, um, and let it kind of air out and air dry, and then you've got dried time. Not a big deal. So Parmesan for on the top, 
two tablespoons of butter, and two tablespoons of olive oil, salt and pepper as always. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this cast iron skillet nice and high. You can use a regular skillet if that's um, all you have. Let me get this chicken thing out of here. Um, I prefer the cast iron skillet, as you all know. You've heard me talk about that before. All right, let's get our onion cut up and peeled. I'm gonna get this out here. So we're gonna get the pepper and the onions in there. Hash is great. Hash is, like I said, traditionally a, a breakfast, but you can definitely, it's perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I like it hot or cold, it's good. You can mix so many different things in hash. You can use all different kinds of meats um, and a lot of different flavors uh, can go into a hash. We're gonna go a nice small dice on this. You wanna keep everything consistently diced. That's the key to this recipe. So we're gonna go small to small medium dice here on this onion. Again, nice sharp knife, always important. And I go horizontal, then vertical, and then vertical the opposite way. Turn to 90 degrees and vertical that way. Just get that knob, no waste. Definitely don't wanna be wasting nowadays because you may not be getting the chance, or you should not be getting the chance to run out constantly to the grocery store. One trip every like two weeks or so. Um, stocking up, keeping those leftovers. So use every little bit that you have. Don't waste. Take those leftovers, make them into something different. That's why this is perfect. You can definitely use that leftover chicken um, and you're good to go. Okay, now we're gonna do these peppers. You've seen me do a pepper before, just kind of go. You got the green part here with the stem that was uh, attaching it to the plant. Just go right down the side beside that side, then down the opposite side, down, and then lay it flat. You got this left, lay it flat, cut around those seeds straight down, and you got the bottom, and then just throw your core in there. You're done. Okay, we're just gonna do a nice, medium dice with these if you got any seeds. And I always pull this little white membrane out that holds the seeds in. That doesn't taste very good. It doesn't taste horrible, but you know, get rid of it. Not that peeling. So we'll get that pulled out here. All right, we got this pan definitely heating up. We're gonna do a nice, again, medium dice on these peppers. Try to match the onions. You're gonna try to keep everything consistent size. That's what makes a great hash. Let's everything brown up evenly. That way your potatoes aren't overcooked and your onions are still raw. But everything nice and consistent. Okay. So we're just making long slices here. I'm going about this long, or excuse me, that wide, excuse me. Then we're gonna take these, and you can put this all in one big giant pile because it's all going into the pan at the same time. So take those little matchsticks, a bunch at a time. Make sure you're cutting all the way through. And it's all in a pile here. Make sure you don't have any long ones. If you have a long one, crack, pull it back out, get it cut. All right, doing good here. This is gonna fill this pan, so make sure you're using a large pan. Again, if you don't have a large cast iron, you can definitely use a non-stick pan. That's not a problem. Maybe put a little extra butter, a little extra olive oil, make sure everything's browning up like you want it. Okay. Go, almost done. Hope y'all are keeping well, keeping safe, like I said. Every two weeks for the grocery store, stock up on those meats, cook for a crowd. I still cook for a crowd, even in a situation like this, because the leftovers are great. You may not be eating as much, so if there's only two of you, make it for four. That gives you leftovers for the next day, for lunch, or for two days later when you don't feel like cooking dinner. All right, same thing with these peppers. Um, you obviously, they're a little looser, a um, little more flimsy. You can't, so I just cut the top off like that. Top off this one. And then I slice right 
actually so you can see that seed pod right there now you're touching all these peppers these oils are getting on your hands don't try to put your contacts in don't touch yourself anywhere that you don't want burning which is pretty much everywhere all right and then all i do is just kind of tear down open it flat tear down this one open it flat you can lay these on top of each other again cut the long slices be careful if you have any cuts on your hands you may want to put gloves on while you're dealing with these you may just want gloves in general just to avoid uh the heat that's coming out of here poblano peppers again are not that hot um, but any pepper definitely you can feel it if you have a cut on your hand or anything like that all right and these you definitely want to make sure you're getting in small little pieces no big chunks of these hot peppers one bite of a hot pepper can ruin a whole meal. All right, so let's get a tablespoon, two tablespoons, excuse me, of butter in there. Oh, and now let's get the rest of this olive oil in there. That'll cool the butter down. Putting olive oil and butter together not only tastes amazing, but the olive oil has a higher heat tolerance, so it stops the butter from browning when combined. Here we go. And that is ready to go. We are going to, I'm going to push this up a little bit so you can see it. There we go. We're going to get all these onions, Ooh, peppers in that pan. Okay. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Don't worry if you get a couple seeds in there. It's not the end of the world. Get a couple seeds on my board, no big deal. Alright, notice I got a waste bowl, don't forget your waste bowl, it makes the cleanup so much easier. You just throw all that waste right into the trash. Right, let's get this nice and combined, stirred up. See any big pieces that didn't exactly get cut, kind of half cut through. Now's the time to break them up. That all mixed up, super colorful, it looks kind of Christmassy, I love it. Again, yellow pepper, no big deal. Green pepper, no big deal what I had on hand, so it's what we're using. All right, there we go. And we're gonna cook this for about six, seven minutes. Garlic is going in as well. Garlic cooks a little faster, tends to burn a little faster, so we're going in with it a minute or two later. I got these peeled, so I'm just gonna dice it up nice and small. All right, nice and diced up. Everybody gets a little taste of garlic. Drop the knife and keep going one more time. Okay. Let's hit it with some salt and pepper. Just a pinch. Flavor it up. A little salt. Pepper. Another nice stir. Just getting this nice and wilted down. There's that chicken. Let's go check it. Yep, I'm going to give it two more minutes and then we're going to pull it out. All right. Garlic in. I can already smell those peppers. Yum. Here's what we're going to do next. We are going to give this a stir and we're going to attack these potatoes. Get the peels off. If you're using a yellow potato, the peels are probably fine to leave on. Same thing with fingerlings. These sweet, pot sweet potatoes definitely want these peels off. They're not going to cook up. Ten minutes if they're in there. Now, when you peel, do you pull towards yourself or away from yourself? Technically, you should go away from yourself. You don't want to cut yourself. I don't know why I've always gone this way. Make sure you get that end. Death by peeler. I don't know if that's ever been in a horror movie. <laughs> Could be, though. If you got a sharp peeler, definitely hurt yourself. All right, there's one down. See, peeling is not that hard. As a kid, I was always like, I don't want to peel. Really not that hard. I don't know what my problem was with peeling. Probably that I had to peel like a 10-pound bag. It makes a huge difference. 
we're a mashed potato family. What about you guys? Man, I can smell that sweet potato deliciousness the second you start peeling all that oil comes out of here. Yum. All right, fix this up a little bit. Sweet potatoes definitely get some little rough spots. We'll cut that out. There we go. All right, peels are off. Perfect. Board cleaned back up. Now we're going to cut these into a nice, small dice. You've seen me dice before. I'm going to pull these ends off. I'm going to pull this yuck spot out. Happens. Potatoes are in the ground. So, you know, get a little rot. All right, we're going to, as flat as you can, cut this into four or five slices. Same thing with the other one. And I'm doing those quarter inch maybe. You all know I'm bad at measurements, but I'd say that's about a quarter inch. All right, take those ends off because those are gonna be super wobbly. Just get the flat ends first. You're just gonna go again, another quarter inch. smell the spice coming out of those poblanos. Nice delicate heat. Okay, keep going with these potatoes. Again, quarter. It's hard to cut like it was there. You may be cutting a little too much. Don't hurt yourself. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take these off before I cut myself is what I'm gonna do. All right, there we go. Better to cut one more stack than to cut yourself. All right. Nice small dice on these. Also, if you're trying, struggling to get it cut, you're probably going to be cutting it too big. And that's not going to work in the recipe. Okay, here we go. Keep going. One more. like I said. You could use sausage in this instead of the chicken. Any kind of potato that you might have will work. Any kind of pepper you have. Peppers, onions, and potatoes are the ingredients that you have to have to technically be a hash. Um, but again, the varieties can change up makes a ton. This is definitely enough for four, maybe even six, depending on how hungry you are. We're going to use four eggs on this. You could definitely sneak in another two eggs at the last minute. Not a problem. Got some bread or salad going. All the better. All right. Pull out. That's just a couple little gross spots here. I'm going to pull those out. All right. So there's your potatoes. We're going to that. That's a lot of potato. I'm not going to use this whole entire potato uh, pile here. All right. So, seven minutes. Cut potatoes in cube. Potato chicken. All right, so next, the potatoes are going to go in, and then I'm going to grab that chicken. If you see any big ones, make sure you kind of cut them down. All right, potatoes in. was a bit much. You really want about a heaping cup, maybe a little bit more. Get that nice and stirred around. Now this is gonna cook for another five, seven minutes. Get these potatoes nice and cooked through. Get everything mixed up. Get that hot onions, peppers, 
coating potatoes. Let's cook them down. Okay. Nice sweet potatoes is gonna contrast really nice with that spicy poblano. But again, a normal pepper, just as good. We're also going to take the time, like I said, if your time is getting uh, kind of black, don't worry about it. Um, pull it out, set it out somewhere that's a little drafty maybe, not directly in the sun, and uh, they'll dry. It's the exact same thing as your dried time that you buy at the grocery store. Not a big deal. Just don't leave it in the refrigerator because if it goes in the refrigerator, that adds moisture and that's going to cause it to rot. And that's definitely not what you, what you want. Once it goes kind of black, that means it's rotting. And that's no good. All right. There's your thyme. We got a nice, almost tablespoon worth of thyme here. Make sure it's nice and tiny. Get distributed throughout. All right. Get that all sprinkled in. A little bit more salt and pepper. Salt, again, I use Himalayan salt. They seem like a lot, but it's super thin. All right, let's get this stirred around one more time. And we're gonna leave this alone for a couple minutes while we deal with the chicken. I haven't forgotten about the chicken. It's not going anywhere. Super colorful. Okay. Get that chicken. There we go. All the way cooked through. Delicious, yummy chicken. You got lots of chicken juice that I'm going to dump right in that pan because why waste delicious chicken juice? Fork here. That chicken on the board. Okay, we're just gonna let that rest for a second. Just kind of push the potatoes down. Want to start getting a crust forming on the bottom. That's what you're looking for. Friday. You know what that means, Friday Night Frights. Ah, coffee. Directly after this, we will have another delicious, delectable, sure to get Danny Man drunk <laughs> cocktail from the Monster Movie Happy Hour crew. They are an amazing official addition to our Friday Night Frights lineup. They are um, graciously uh, said they want to be partners with us and we want to be partners with them. You guys are loving those cocktails, so we want to pull them in and have them for these last two weeks and then they're gonna jump onto our next venture with us and then they'll be back when Joe Bob is back along with the whole entire crew for Friday Night Frights. So they are coming up next with a delicious cocktail. Make sure you jump over there off of my feed. And then uh, we also have the eight o'clock feature and then a 10 o'clock feature and then at Midnight, we have the Midnight Marathon, as always, over on MutantFam.com. I'm giving this a nice stir. So don't miss all of those movies. Tweet along. Use the hashtag Midnight Marathon. This is becoming... Man, we are over two months doing this, and you guys have been amazing. It's so much fun. Not exactly Joe Bob, but we do our best. and <laughs> We're making it through. We only got two more weeks. We can make it. Then we get 10 weeks of Joe Bob. How awesome is that? Ain't nobody complaining about that. Maybe that it's not 20. That's about the only complaint I have. 20 weeks, please, Shutter. All right. Let's get this chicken breast nice and diced up. I'm going to hold it with a fork. First, I'm just going to cut it in 
nice slices, about the same, again, as what you cut the potatoes in. Because again, we're trying to keep everything very consistent in size, okay? And if you start cutting into your chicken and it's just a touch undercooked, don't worry about it because it's going in this hash and these small little cubes will cook up real quick. You could shred this if you prefer having it shredded. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in small cubes and then I'm gonna run my knife through it again to kind of shred it up. But if you've got, you know, chicken on the bone, because you had a big rotisserie chicken or, you know, you roasted a chicken, go ahead and shred it up, it's not a problem. Okay, cutting, keep cutting, keep cutting. You got just a little piece of fat in there. Then we'll pull that out. We'll probably cook down in the pan, but just to be safe, nobody wants to bite into a big piece of chicken fat. Ew. All right, I'm just gonna run my knife through this. Make sure it's nice, small, tiny little cubes. It's really well cooked. It only took, what, about 14 minutes in the oven? When you flatten it out like that, it definitely speeds up the process. It's definitely a little tip. All right, chicken is going in. And it's warm. I watch Daddy Man's face. Hi. <laughs> Get it going here. Go. Get it nice and stirred around. All right, we're gonna kick this heat all the way up now because we're gonna leave this alone for a couple minutes after we get it stirred because you want it to start forming a crust on the bottom. Two more time. So we're gonna flatten it out. And now all that's cooked, try a sweet potato here. Yep, almost. We're getting there. Let that go for just a minute. Hands. So for the last drive-in, I'm not going anywhere. I will, even though Friday Night Frights is going to take a little break, obviously for Joe Bob because he runs on the same time, I am still going to be doing a pre-show for the Joe Bob show. And I want to announce the very first episode. I'm going to try to do a state fair theme and I'm going to take state fair food, elevate it up a little bit, show you how to make it at home. We have a big one to start. We are going to be doing a delicious uh, pimento cheese stuffed jalapenos. And they are going to be breaded and deep fried, filled with that pimento cheese. Pimentos are a nice um, red pepper. And then you've got the, the, green, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the cream cheese and those pimentos and delicious cheese inside those peppers, nice and egg breaded, and then deep fried, hot and gooey and delicious, and nothing says state fair like a little jalapeno popper. So that is going to be our first episode, and that starts at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time on April 24th, right before Joe Bob and The Last Dragon. So I will be here. I'm also going to do a couple Rewinds, I'm gonna be live, by the way. That is the first time I'm gonna be live since this whole uh, mess medical emergency has started. I didn't feel it was appropriate to be live all the time and, and ask you to go out and grab some groceries, but it is a special occasion. So we are going to be live for the first time. I'm hopefully gonna have some special guests. I'm lining those up right now as we speak, but it's a great snack. For before Joe Bob, and because of Joe Bob and Darcy and the last drive-in on Shutter, that is my neighbor, uh, we're going to definitely go live for that one. Then we're also going to do a couple of the Mutant Cafe Rewinds. Some of you I know are newer, 
so you may not have seen some of my past episodes and I've got some special episodes and some last drive-in themed episodes that we're gonna go ahead and rewind for a couple of weeks and then I will be back periodically every couple of weeks with a new live episode on Friday nights again that is at seven o'clock seven to eight will be done in time for you to jump with your food in front of the Joe Bob countdown the trailer the Ernie the lizard um, and you'll be able to enjoy that while you're eating and then Joe Bob will start at nine o'clock Eastern time so we've got a nice I can see all the smoke coming out that means the liquid is pulling away which means we're getting a nice crust so you're just gonna slowly start kind of pulling this up and flipping it over there you go you got some nice browning action going on there Ooh, try to keep it in the pan okay couple turns Make sure you get everything, because if you don't turn something at this point, it's gonna start burning. There we go. Flatten that all back out. Now here is the fun part. Get it all nice and flat. Take my wooden spoon again. Get it really flattened out, because here comes the fun part with the eggs. Here, take a spoon, and we are gonna make in the four different quadrants, we are going to push down and make a nice indentation, All right? That's about a quarter of an inch deep, All right? Make sure you've got them nice and spaced out. You've got lots of room in that pan. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna take these eggs, and we're gonna crack them one at a time and put it right in that indentation. There we go. Perfect. Okay, try not to break it, but if it breaks, no big deal. Ooh. Try not to get any shells in there. And if you get a shell, this is my trick from before, use a shell. Shells are attracted to shells. There you go. One more. All right, not bad, I only broke one. <laughs> And then get this lid on here and we're gonna let that steam for about four minutes and then we are done. That's it. See how easy that was? You just made hash. Congratulations. So a little more coffee. And again, make sure this is on high. You want all that stuff getting nice and crusty on the bottom. Again, do not forget, I keep saying again, do not forget, it is Friday night, Friday second to last. I think that's the penultimate, for those of you that are English nerds, penultimate episode of season one. Don't forget to check out all our tweets for the eight o'clock movie. Make sure you press play at eight o'clock and you are using the hashtag Friday Night Freights. And then that is not the end. At 10 o'clock, we'll have a tiny little break in there. And then at 10 o'clock, excuse me one second, <coughs> we will have the second feature for Friday Night Frights. Make sure you press and play at 10 o'clock so you are with us. And then another tiny little break. And then we will have the Midnight Marathon over at MutantFam.com. Always a great time there. Always great content. Couple movies going on and you will not want to miss that. And also, do not miss the movie that is going on, or excuse me, the cocktail that is going on right after this video. I'm looking at my time. Yep, I'm running a little long, y'all. Um, we'll have a cocktail that's starting up in probably like five minutes or so, maybe 10 minutes. That is usually at a quarter to. Um, I'm running a little long, so it might be a couple minutes later than that. Um, I'm waiting for these eggs to firm up. And here's a little tip. Uh, yeah, here's what I'm gonna do. These are still cooking up and they're cooking up nice and slow. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw this in the oven. Oh, really quick. They'll go much quicker in that 400 degree oven than they're gonna go on here, All right? Always be ready to mix it up a little if you need to. All right, and I'm gonna grab this towel and put it down because that pan is gonna be scorching hot when it comes out. Thank you guys again, 40 plus episodes. I appreciate you watching, especially right now when it's kind of difficult to get the food. I'm trying to help you the best I can. If you have any questions, 
please find me on Twitter. I am at Cafe Mutant, not Mutant Cafe, at Cafe Mutant. You can find me there. I would happily answer any questions you have about pantry items, what to do with what you have. I am more than happy. I've already helped. I've got 40 plus recipes also located. The link is on that Twitter address. Find me there. All right. So let's check this and see how we're doing. Feel bad we're running out of time. So close. One more minute, guys. How you doing? <laughs> For once, Dagman has nothing to say. <laughs> I apologize. Guesses on the last drive-in movies? I think we're for sure gonna get a Tammy and the T-Rex. There's no way he can pass that up. I think we're getting a Knight of the Comet, maybe, would be my guess. Who knows, there's so many good movies on there. I would love to see one cut of the dead. I would love to see what uh, Joe Bob thinks of that movie. I personally love it. I've watched it so many times. All right, I think we're about done. I'm gonna pull that out. Even if the eggs are just slightly underdone, which they are, you guys, I'm sorry, one more minute. I keep apologizing. We did this with a popcorn episode, I remember. I don't remember what episode of Mutant Theater it was, but my popcorn would not pop. And we just kept going and going and going. But we got one more minute here in the oven, and then I'm gonna pull it out. You'll get the idea, even if it's not done. I'm gonna pull it out. Right. Yeah, close enough. All right, here you go. This is the dish. It's so hard to see. There we go, those eggs are still a little runny. But you can kind of see what's going on there. Delicious, yummy hash, delicious eggs. Sit right here. I'm gonna pull the camera up. Thank you all for joining me. I apologize for running so late. And here we go, here's your hash. A little undercooked, I'm gonna throw this back in for another minute, but this gives you a general idea of what your hash should look like. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I will see you next week. Final episode of season one next week. Thanks for joining me.